This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. There was a case a while back where a freedom person was arrested for a victimless crime. While this person was in jail, word got out about it and calls began flooding into the... The authorities retaliated by making life more uncomfortable for the detainee and pretty soon a different kind of word went out. Activists uh, urging other activists not to call the jail anymore. Now, I don't know exactly who urged what or who was in favor of what, but for one reason or another, the authorities were able to get a bit of what they wanted by increasing their level of cruelty. In effect, some, at least, of the freedom activists thus handed them a win uh, and a reward for bad behavior, pretty much guaranteeing there's going to be more bad behavior. A message was sent, oh, these folks can be intimidated. Let's do that again. There was also that case, I believe, in Rome under the Nazis where instead of just raiding every Jewish house and trying to seize everything they could that they could find, they instead just captured some Jewish folks, held them ransom, and let the Jewish community do all the hunting for them. Uh, they hunted out all their own valuables, handed them over to the SS, and they were all uh, taken captive, except the ones that escaped. By a more powerful SS, one that had collected more money than it would have otherwise. The appropriate thing to do isn't always the exact opposite of what the government's telling you to, but I wonder if maybe an icier approach to these kinds of situations would be appropriate, or maybe a culture more devoid of Stockholm Syndrome, uh, a liberty culture. Stockholm Syndrome isn't exactly the right word because that's supposedly something captives feel, but I'm referring to the you know, what you could call a hostage syndrome, where people basically surrender their advantages out of fear, maybe for themselves or maybe for someone else. I'm wondering if maybe the next time this happens, the response should actually be more calls, and that a person who is taken captive, well, we have to take any instructions they give us with a grain of salt. Or maybe out and out and ignore those instructions if they seem to be instructions to cease activism. That seems like kind of what Adam Kokesh did when he was arrested most recently in Washington, D.C. I think he indicated before his arrest that he might be coerced into saying this or that and, and that it should be ignored under certain circumstances. I think I, I would like to say pretty much the same thing. Uh, if I'm ever arrested and you hear me blurt out a call for less peaceful activism, you should probably ignore it. And if I'm ever taken hostage for ransom, either by the government or someone else, much more likely the former, and it wouldn't precisely be a ransom, but uh, I would say the ransom should not be paid. Unless maybe I'm getting bailed out or something. I, I might ask to be bailed out under certain circumstances, although I, I've never asked for that before. Anyway, I guess if more of us were to make our wishes known, uh, you know, how should the public handle you and your requests if you are under duress and those requests are thought to actually come from the government? If hostage taking can't be tolerated, then maybe rewarding hostage taking shouldn't be tolerated either. Hard to know how effective I'd be at living up to these ideas while being mistreated and captive. Hard for you to know how you would. But I, I still like that Mel Gibson movie approach, you know, the movie Ransom, where a person was held hostage, and so the father of the person responded. Instead of paying the ransom, he put up the ransom. He took the ransom money and put a bounty on the head of the person who had done the kidnapping. I'm not advocating dead or alive bounties, but we do have to make hostage taking more trouble than it's worth, whether it's the government that takes the hostage or a rogue group. And denying the hostage takers what they're asking for is probably the simplest way to do that. But I almost feel like, like, for instance, if I had defied 
this call to stop calling and had called that jail uh, in defiance of the wishes of some of the Liberty community and allegedly the, the, the prisoner, I would have felt like I was doing the right thing, but I also would have felt like I was really going out on a limb because we do not have that culture of defiance to kidnapping, that culture of, uh, no, you can't manipulate me successfully by threatening my friends or hurting them. I guess right now bringing this concept up is what I can do toward helping to create that culture. Oh, a more subtle way to handle something like this might be for a person to, you know, have a code word that they're able to give out to a few people in conversations, which, uh, you know, you know, conversations held from jail. And that code word could indicate, you know, whether the statement of the prisoner is genuine or coerced. That was, I think, the, some of the most impressive stuff that the American prisoners of war in Vietnam did was they, they had coded messages that they would get out as opposed to just direct defiance. You always want to maneuver around the trench and hit it from the side if you can. Or avoid the strong point entirely, bypass it. Probably by the time this video is up, I'll have a uh, sincere and coerced code word. Code word for sincere speech and one for coerced. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.